So uh, let's talk a little bit more about these things as well. They are belt driven. They have one brake and it's on the back. They try not to use that. If they do, it's kind of set the car. From what we hear from some of the drivers, they will set the car in a couple of the tight turns here with that brake. Minimum weight, 2,350 grams. They hold 125 cc's of fuel. That will play a role here today. Yeah, runtime definitely an issue. Uh, we may have mentioned it four minutes, give or take, of runtime. Going to see these guys coming in like clockwork for fuel. The big difference here may come down to tire strategy, how often they're going to have to do tire changes, if they're going to do two tires or four tires. But fuel economy has been the biggest issue so far in the racing program. So something else we want to point out is there's what they call a gurney on the back of these cars. It, it is adjustable. It's a little rear wing is the best way to describe it. It has a little flap right on the very end, kind of like a gurney, uh, if you will, or a wicker bill, I should say, if you will. But the wicker is all part of the gurney, and it is a mandated size. So you can't change that little end, that little flap. But the gurney itself can be slid up or down. Yeah, they are able to adjust it. There's a maximum height that's allowed by IFMAR, and that's one of the hot topics these days. They have so much downforce that they can run these things on their ragged edge. The more traction you have, the harder you can drive, and the more mo uh, work the engine has to put in. So, and uh, we'll touch on a couple of couple more things and we'll move along here. You talked about the sponge tires that they'll use. Sway bars are interchangeable, uh, not necessarily adjustable, and two bodies available as well, both Hyper and Super Diablo. We're going to get things going here and talk about some of our drivers starting off from the back of the grid. It's going to be your chef. 17-year-old Koki Kato, an electric off-road racer, making his debut here at the World in his second Ace Nitro on-road race. And we have Francisco Taroni, Francisco out of Italy there, as you can see, qualifying ranked 22nd here this week. He'll be starting off in the ninth position. Eighth on the grid, six-time IFMAR world champion, just not in this division, Japan local racer, Infinity team driver, Neato Matsukura. And our next one up is going to be Tahiko Sahashi. Tahiko Sahashi, the 2022 10th scale Nitro Touring Car Champ. Another bad, bad man when it comes to RC racing. As we approach the halfway point of our grid from Germany, Capricorn driver Dominic Grenier. Yeah, Dominic, a 2016 Nitro Touring Car World Champion. As we continue up the ladder here, we're going to talk about Jesse Davis next. And Jesse Davis, a 2021 multi-time Australian champion, has very accomplished and drove his way in through the semi, starting in the fifth hole. Our second Capricorn driver in the field, also from Germany and from the EFRA segment, Tony Gruber. Yeah, Tony Gruber, newly crowned GT champion in that Capricorn, as you were talking about. And Tony will be starting off in the fourth position as we move forward up into the third position. This is Shoki Takahata. Shoki, the reigning world champ. 2019 was the last time they held this competition, and he was the winner. Second on the grid, champion of the Super Bowl with the fastest lap we saw of the week in an Infinity Driver 2000 and I believe 17 IFMAR World Champion, Dario Balestri. Yeah, so fast came out here and really threw it down. 2017 World Champ will pair up here along with our TQ. He races his way right into the A main. The 2015 World Champ starting off on the pole position with a Mugensiki power, a Mugensiki chassis. And we'll see if he can bring it all home. That is Simon Kurtzbach. What a great weekend he ended up having after struggling in the first couple of heat races throughout the, uh, throughout the weekend. He put it together. And he was ready to rip. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, they're ready to set the cars down here on the starting grid. We're going to get this one going. 60 minutes in distance. When that flag touches the ground, they have three seconds to let go of that car, and it is time to go racing. Let's fire them up. Turn them loose here at the IFMAR 8 scale Nitro on World World Championships. Dicey at the front as Kurzbach was a little slow off the line. Balestri and Takahata had to find something to do to avoid the contact. They bunched up with space and out now. Right across the stripe they go, and it is Kurtzbach. First one out there across the stripe. Balestri right behind him, Takahata. So three former champs, one, two, three. Everybody pretty much as they started off looking really good here in the outlap. Clean start for the entire field as they know. They have a long race ahead of them. 60 minutes of racing action with lots 
of pit stops between. Race leader now starting to stretch it out a little bit. Top seed from the seeding rounds as well. Kurzbach had a lot of pressure going into qualifying in the first couple days, or first couple rounds. He had some rough luck. I think he had a fuel out and some off-track excursions as well. So looking to redeem himself here in the final win from the pole. Quickest lap of the weekend held by Balestri as well. You talked about it before and came out here, put down a 13.51 in that pole showdown. Was able to really put one together, so we'll see what he has for him. We uh, we saw Kurzbach come out here in his warm-up and was kind of running what I would call a race pace, yeah. if you will. Really wasn't throwing down the heaters. We saw lapses low as 13.6s and 5s in the qualifier occasionally. These guys coming out on 13.9s and 8s already at the start of the final. What's amazing as we watch them here is their consistency. It is incredible. There's actually a stat called the deviation stat, meaning how much do they deviate from their line. Look at these two already separating themselves, by the way. And these guys do not deviate from their line. It is in the 99 percentile range. They are spot on for lap after lap after lap. And this race is on. Balestri is not going to let him get away. Kurzbach did have a bit of a gap there, but Balestri's like, I don't think I'm going to let you get away. Started putting his head down, hammered down, got some 13 sixes and seven to Kurzbaugh's eights, and now it's closed the gap. Charlie, fill us in here a little bit as well. This is just like big car racing. The first handful of laps here can be a handful with a car. The tires probably using scuffs here. That seems to be what everybody wanted to do, but still the first couple of laps with a ride height a little bit higher here? Maybe not so much here because I think these guys have so many pit stops changed that they got the right size tires on everything. I think more than anything else, it's the nerves as these guys settle in. But do these two guys have nerves? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Ice water in their veins, man. As they start to run away here, both of them. How about this with a 13-9 average? The rest of the field on the 14s. We have not seen anybody in the 13-9 lap uh, average area. Not, Nobody. These guys motivated here as track conditions falling in their favor. And a couple we had at the start of this one, uh, I think it was Taroni had to call the 10-minute grace for some mechanical difficulties. Did some repairs there. Oh, devastation here for the three car of Shoki Takahata, our reigning IFMAR world champion, off the track now with a mechanical. And that was Dominic Griner you were talking about, had to do that engine change there in the semis. Uh, was able to come back there and, and make the transfer. These two guys getting oh. closer. Palestri right there on that gurney, if you will. We were talking about that adjustable panel on the back of the car and now Kurzbach stretches it back out just a little bit. 13-8 to a 13-7 even with the scrub turn. But Lashtree closing in on the back of Kurzbach. But you got to wonder what the game plan is here. These guys still have 56 minutes of racing as we approach our first pit stop window. It's just mind-boggling to me the intense focus that you must have staring at this thing every single lap, every single turn, Leaders and in. right off the bat coming in here. Some strategy going on here as we approach about four minutes in at a pass on pit Woo! road. Almost, Kurzbach holds on to a Balestri oh. right behind him. A lot of pressure on these pit guys for car placement. There's penalties if they don't get the car all the way over the wall, if they bring it back with the fuel gun still installed. Both of these guys, former world champions, they know what it's like to race at this level. That was intense. So Kurzbach comes in, had a little advantage. His pit crew did exactly what they needed to do to keep that advantage and sent him right back out. I missed the pit out uh, number. Did you catch it? Davis came out on the second after the pit on a 13-5 to gap out on Balestri. A little bit. Full tank of gas after the outlap. Incredible right off the bat. So throwing it down here, and we'll try to keep an eye on this pit stop delta as well. We've seen as quick as uh, in the night, low 19 second range. I look back a couple guys here in the middle of the pack in 19 1, 19 2. We've seen as fast as 18 9s, but we're going to see 19 20s, I think, on the average. A lot of pressure on the pit, man. They can make it worse and they can make it better. So again, already taking a look at this a half a second between the top two, then. 1.2 seconds back to third. It looks like that gap might even be bigger. Yeah, you see the distance there. The orange car just off the back of the shot is Gruber in the Capricorn. Jesse Davis trying to stay in contact with our leaders running fourth right now. Nayato Matsukuro up from eighth to fifth. Francesco Taroni from the back of the pack up to sixth now. Tadahiko Sahishi in the seventh where he started. Dominic Greiner in the eighth spot. Dropping down a couple and Koki Kato up one as Takahata is in the pits. Yeah, and I, I believe Dominic Greiner was up and around the fifth position, fourth or fifth position, something happened in there, drops back down, started off in the sixth hole, 
down the ninth and then back up to eighth now as we continue to watch the top two here just rip off laps deadly consistently. Kurzbach handling the pressure well as Balestri is haunting him from the rear. Car just a little more to the inside. Kurzbach line. Uh oh <gasps> Almost got it done right there. Stuck the nose inside. Balestri applying a ton of pressure right here to Kurzbach. Kurzbach is yet to flinch. Kurzball just holding his line. He's not trying to get down into the paint. Balestri all over the back wing. Hanging out in the back just a little bit was Gruber. You can see Gruber back in there. And Gruber with a handful, looks like, from Davis as well. So battle going on back there for third place. That split just four-tenths of a second. As this battle heats up, Gruber is closing. Last couple laps, Gruber has made up a tenth, and you can see him getting closer there in the short shoot. To put it all in perspective, first, second, third, and fourth all separated by about five, six, seven tenths. Kurzbach with a 13-6 that time across the line. A seven for Balestri, a seven for Gruber. That is a hawk right there, man. I mean, that's that's probably less than two tenths between the two. Matching According to effect, as you talked about before. Matching 13 sixes for the top three that time across the line. Matsukura trying to get back in the hunt here from fifth, turning a 13-6 as well. Top three players all in a 13-6. Yeah, Matsukura as well down there in the fifth spot. We've not seen pace like this all week long. I was not expecting them to run qualifying laps through the final, especially this early on. Maybe late in the race, but here we are. 8.53 minutes left as we get to close to the eight-minute mark where we will see our second round of pit stops. First eight minutes of sail by. <laughs> Exciting stuff here. Here they come. Both of them together staying on that Hit same exact strategy. Side by side, down and away. Kurzbach off. Balestri down to the bottom. There. Balestri Takes tries a shot it. at it. Kurzbach outside in. Maintains once again. Incredible racing action. Wow. I thought for sure they were going to make some bigger contact there, but the RC God smiling upon them. And right back out in third place, and I believe that is uh, Gruber. Gruber that jumps right back out there where he was, and maybe even closer. One, two, three, four, five, all nose to tail. As the pit stops reset, there it is. Kurzbach, Balestri, and Gruber all nose to tail. Gruber's pit man doing some work on the 19-1 outlap. You see the gap closing all on pit stops. 1888 pit stop there for Jesse Davis. He wants to get out here and play as well. Kurzbach leads the way. Balestri all over the back door. It has been that way now for eight minutes of racing action. Incredible effort here out of these drivers. Tony Gruber right up there in the hunt has for sure closed this gap on these front two leaders. Balestri making a little bit of time up there, coming down the hill. Kurzbach cars a little bit loose. I think he's letting it breathe so he doesn't pinch down and wear those tires out. And you can see Balestri able to stick a nose just to the inside consistently, but not able to make it past. Yeah, this racing right here is good for Gruber. Gruber missed it, by the way, for a moment there with a the 14-1, but has since closed it right back up in the hunt. Another look down there on the bottom. Can he get it done? He has track position now, not on this right-hander. Not going to happen. Kurzbach once again hangs on. Inside to outside, trying to make it stick, but running out of track. Woo, here he comes again. Balestri down on the bottom, really rotates hard in that left-hander. Right on the gurney. Kurzbach trying to keep the door closed, but Balestri keeps sticking it in there. And from eighth on the grid, you see fourth car in line there, Matsukura making up heaps of ground on these racers as they battle at the front doing 13-9 side by side. Incredible racing action. They've yet to touch. About as clean as you can get and could not get any closer. Charging hard, Balestri. This is his spot. He's going to take a look again. Not close enough. Great stuff here. They settle in just a little bit. And again, Gruber hanging right there in third. Like, go ahead. You guys just beat the heck out of each other. And I'll take over first. Just hand it to me. That's something that Scotty Boy, talked right about. right there. In Kurzbach the is a little loose coming out of left hand. And that's where Balestri catches him. Yeah, something Scotty talked about in the track walk was the difference in lines and how it affects everything. And you see Balestri learning. You, you need to be on that paint. Cars can get really tight through that left-hander because you're sliding up into a hill. So I'm sure at this level they've done something to combat that and might be just a tick loose. Ruber now starting to close in just a little bit. Last couple laps he was about a half a tenth quicker than these guys. So it seems pretty clear to me that when Balestri comes out of the pits, the first 
handful of laps, if you will, maybe six, seven, eight laps. That car's a rocket ship. As they get later into the run, it seems like Kurzbach's able to drive away a little bit. Hmm. Balestri, though, still haunting as they work their way through the sweeper, and I think it feels like Balestri's car is working better than Kurzbach's right now. I don't disagree. I mean, typically, if you can run up on the back of somebody that close, you're probably faster. We've not Ooh, mentioned it a number of times as they come in here one more time. Coming in at the 11, before the 11-minute oh, mark. Oh, he gets out first by a bunch. Tire a change. Long stop right there. Tire change already. We're 10 minutes in. Is that right? Yeah. 10 minutes, 11 minutes in, 59 minutes left to go. Kurzbach already with a tire change. Balestri came in for gas very early. I was expecting closer to the 12-minute mark. So that's going to put Tony Gruber and Nato Matsukuro to the front of this one. Balestri down to third. I was waiting for somebody. I, I thought Balestri might do an undercut there. Look like Gruber might have done the same thing, right? They come in here and uh, take on tires because he comes out right in front of Balestri. Gruber. Is it? Yeah, Gruber on a pit out lap here. Get an 18-3 pit out lap. Jesse Davis coming out of the pits as well. Matsukura back to fourth. Davis now up to third. Matsukura was in the pits there, did a 19-1 on his out. 18-3, a blistering pit stop. As new leader now, Tony Gruber has Balestri to deal with. Yeah, a little bit better there on the pit, and we'll now have to deal with him. He was able to get by there, courtesy of that blazingly fast pit stop. And Blastery trying to get down underneath him right there. We talked about Kurzbach taking on the tires, so not in this hunt right now, courtesy of a pit stop and potential strategy. Gruber getting a bit of breathing room now. Came across as a 13A Blastery, only able to muster a 14-0. Matsukura now to the three spot. Tadahiko Sahashi up to fourth. Kurzbach down to fifth, Davis to sixth. And again, the difference here between first and second, about four tenths of a second. Then a little bit of breathing room to get back there to third. Matsukura about 1.5 back. Kurzbach 2.5 back behind Matsukura. Gruber coming back down the hill. Balestri trying to size him up. Gruber's car looking more in the paint than Kurzbach's did. So maybe Balestri having a bit of harder time. But Balestri now coming up off the paint. So maybe some strategies changing from the pit lane. Kurzbach, by the way, I had put it somewhere around four, four and a half seconds out of the lead to put it that in perspective based on that long pit stop. Things settling down now. It's the field starting to get spread out. But top nine drivers all on the lead lap as the leaders are just now getting to the back of Kato and Griner. The top seven all ripping off 13 second laps, 13 sevens, and 13 eights. Incredible consistency out of everybody here. Averages falling down now just a little bit with those pit stops, of course, to a 14.2. Nothing short of incredible. Rubis car may be starting to pick up a bit of a rear slide as he came down the hill there. Looked like it was driving from the rear a bit aggressively. But Lestri's car looking to come back into its own as he's getting back down into the paint. Gruber hanging on here. So we Doing are a really nice job. Was back there in third place and kind of caught these guys. 14 minutes elapsed. They came in right around the 10 and a half, maybe 11 minute mark. We should be seeing some pit stops from our leaders again here. First one being right on, pretty much right on the four-minute marker, 345, really. And we've kind of heard that is the number if they want to stretch it out to be safe, about 345. One more time by Pelestri into the pits. Car goes up, fuel goes in, car goes down, and off he goes. Talking about some of our other players down in here, Jesse Davis currently in fifth. Tadahiko Sahashi in sixth, Francisco Taroni in seventh, Dominic Greiner in eighth. Dominic Greiner with that engine change a little bit earlier, uh, had to take a little extra time. Per the rules, he was allowed to have that, made it into the semifinal, and then made the transfer out of the semifinal in a very exciting race. Kuki Kato there in ninth, and Chihoki Takahata, as we saw him coming to the pits earlier, unfortunately a number of laps down. Balestri's outlap from the pit stop at 18-9. Backs it up with a 13-9 as he works his way into third spot now. He is off cycle from our leaders on a short stop there. So the Gruber and Matsakura are going to be due in here probably another minute or so. Watching Balestri here, currently in third place. 
Maedo Matsukura in second place. Tony Gruber in first. Gruber and Matsukura cycling through pit stops there. We get on board with Jesse Davis as he'll be doing here for a pit. It looks like they're getting set up to possibly do tires here. Matsukura maintains second spot, 19-6 out lap. Gruber with a rough one, 25-8, maybe tires. Yeah. Uh, 15 minutes in. So this is when yeah. we were thinking they would they would take tires. Matsukur did not get tires. He did in 19-1. There's no way they're doing tires in 19. But he does maintain that second spot. But Lestri still hasn't done tires yet either. Sadahashi hasn't done tires. Kurzbach and Gruber both did from what we can tell. Jesse Davis with a 19-87. So I would say just fuel yeah. on that one. But Lestri now back to the front. They did a short stop to get some clean track. And it's playing their advantage now. 13-9 last time by, can put it back into cruise control. Matsukura from eighth on the grid up to second. Sahashi started seventh, running third. Oh, problem here for the number that nine nice. car. That is Francesco Taroni. His woes continue here at the start of the final. Had some rough luck. They were doing some mechanic and it looks like they didn't get it quite sorted. Alestri across the line, got it on cruise control, 13-8. Matsukura with a 14-1. Yeah, a lot. Uh, uh, we'll see if to be in the pits. Balestri can just rip off some laps here. Beautiful job by those guys, by the way, to get him out here in clean air. Absolutely nobody around him, so he can keep a blistering pace. Sahashi out of the pits on a 19-8, not too shabby. Balestri at the front. Going to need tires here, and that may be why we're seeing this drop in pace a bit. Kurzbach back underway, 14 flat as he moves to third. Gruber with a 14-1. But Matsukur and Balestri still on their start tires. Kurzbach and Gruber came in for some tires. And we'll watch Balestri here tag the paint on, miss the paint a little bit on the exit of the last turn. Right in the paint there, chops this one off. Just touches the paint, misses it a little bit right here. Late apex, watch this early apex, has typically been all four down in there. Flicks it through that right-hander, tags the paint and the kink, and nice and tight through the final turn. And he'll do it again and again and again, again right down on the paint. Watch this early entry here. Excellent stuff, man. Dario Balestri. 2017 world champion. He qualified second that year. The year he TQ'd, not so much luck. So he's hoping for that return from the P2 here this afternoon. That's what he said earlier in his interview. He's like, I, I was TQ here once. Did not work out so well, but did Unless well in the, the second spot. And here we go again. See if they can maintain. Quick one there. He's getting tires this time. Right side's going on. See if they do all four. They're going to do all four. So Balestri in the pits for a four-tire change. I saw him practice that dozens of times the other night. 18 minutes in. Four tire pit stop and for Balestri. We thought that they could go about 20 minutes is what we've been hearing. So that early tire change that uh, that we saw out of Kurzbach, and he's not been able to bump back up the field, has not uh, panned out just yet. So Balestri's four tire stop, a 27.1 outlap. Matsukura now moving to the front. Gruber in the two spot as we ride along here with Jesse Davis. And Kurzbach time with the tires was, I, I, as I recall, was yep. the same. Yeah. So right on par there, but Kurzbach not able to jump back up in the, in the fray just yet. Kurzbach right now circulating in the sixth spot. Jesse Davis has worked his way up to third, circulating with a 13-8. Matsukura at the front with a 14-2, and I got to think he's running out of tires. He hasn't been down in the 13s for a few laps. Another 14-2 for our leader. And you got to like uh, exactly what those guys did uh, for Dario Balestri to come in there about that 18-minute mark, a little bit short of the 20-minute mark where they thought that the car became a handful in the last couple of minutes. If they can do that again, they'll make one Here more stop Davis. with tires and make it out. Davis coming in for fuel and tires this time. By fuel goes in. Tires getting swapped. A little bit of stumble there by the front. Rears going on. Click in. Click out. And away they go. Requiring two people to do this job quickly, as you can see there. Davis back underway with some fresh rubber underneath. So I've grabbed the engine. I saw him grab the engine uh, with his hand as well, his fingers down in there. I mean, how blazingly hot are those things? I hit run, give or take, 250 degrees Jeez. in this situation. I mean, he grabbed the whole that thing like it was nothing. Yeah. These guys have very strong hands. That was Shaps, by the way. Wonderful uh, human being helping me out for sure all weekend long. 
wealth of knowledge, of course. Jesse Davis will certainly pay off there. A talented, talented driver. We pick up our new race leader just in the pitch to the seven of Tadahiko Sahashi. Had the lead coming in for some probably fresh tires and fuel, and that's going to allow Gruber to get to the front. Yep, Tadahashi getting some fresh rubber. Look Lightning at the sauce pipe right there on the left hand side. Twist. Away they go. So the seven car uh, making his way up there, being uh, one of the players here leading this race. I uh, should not say leading the race was up, made his way up towards the front of the race. So. Gruber now to the front. He came in and took on two tires only, if I'm not mistaken, early on in this one. We'll see how that holds up. Balestri back up to second. Kurzball now back to third. Matsukura back to fourth. Davis going to hold down the five spot. Sahashi back to sixth. Griner in seventh. Koki Kato up to eighth now as Taroni and Takahata have not had their world championship finals that they were looking for. Let's talk about tire deg inside of this as we take a look at our leader here in Tony Gruber. When we talk about tire deg, it's not like the big cars. They don't start to lose grip. They maintain grip. What they lose is size. The foam literally gets scrubbed off. They lose so much size. Keep in mind this track predominantly left-hand turns, so the right-hand side tires will wear down quicker than the left-hand side to the point that they're a completely different size and makes the car extremely difficult to drive. So it's not like a big car in terms of that. More so, there's no differential. With the spool in the back, it really makes the car want to track sideways as they accelerate out of corner. So the more wear they get... The more uneven they're going to get, and it can really make it hard on the driver to do his job. And it can, they can wear down to the point that the bottom can scrub, correct? Yeah, they lose ride height through this wear. The foam is actually, or the foam rubber rather, is actually being sanded off the rim as they circulate the track. Yeah, and you can see it out here. We've seen it all week long. Uh, I don't know if we'll see it during race conditions here, but up at the top, it is literally a layer of dust. So much like big cars, they can get out of the marbles. If they miss a turn, they'll pick it up, and then, of course, it's a handful for the next few turns. So here at the 22-minute mark, Balestri and Kurzball came out of the pits, both on 19-second outlap. We joined board with Nat Nayato Matsukura running in that fourth position. Matsukura, white nose, yellow tailed. He's been a very helpful, big part of this event, doing lots of different duties, even a driver for half the team, ourselves included. Cycling back out after those pit stops and tires have been done. Gruber up top, Balestri in second. Kurzbach now back up into the top three and third, albeit separated by a number of seconds. I think Matsukura needs tires if he didn't get them yet. He's been in those 14s, but maybe they're happy with that. On a long tire strategy as we get past the 20-minute mark, 23 minutes complete. Here comes Matsukura to the pits. They're going to put the fuel in. They're going tires. No tires. And down and away they go. You see, he had the pitman had a spotter letting him know the lane was clear, and he could just set it down blind. Yeah, Mat really good point, because a lot of times they'll grab it facing the opposite direction. Yeah. Matsukura back underway now. Maintaining the fourth position. 18-5 fuel stop. Wonderful job. 18-3, I think, is as quick as we have seen, to put that in perspective. Murai son, a master mechanic, has been a mechanic to many world champions. Gruber at the front, 13-7. Balestri with a 13-6. Kurzbaugh last time was a 13-9. This time by going to be a 14 flat. Matsukura with a 13-8 last time. This time by a 13-9. So our top runner still sub-14s. Sahashi in the five spot checks in with a 13-69 that lap. And if you're new to the game and you're watching this, yes, that is a puff of smoke. These things burn nitromethane, 25%. Uh, the rest of it, for the most part, is methanol. But, yeah, they'll puff some smoke out of these things whenever they get out of the throttle and pick it back up. It's Once a, again, watching our leader here. It's often a bad sign if there's no smoke. It means they're running a little <laughs> bit lean. Yeah, they don't last very long at that rate. They'll seize one of these pistons up. Their day is done. Right through the bottom goes Gruber, and our leader has been out here for a while now. Look at that car handle, man. So Gruber with the biggest lead we've seen for anybody thus far as he's got to give a couple seconds, give or take, second and a half over Balestri. Gruber in the all orange. You see Balestri in the gray car just off the bottom of the screen. So uh, there was a time when Balestri was near six seconds back from Gruber. And Kurzbach was another three seconds behind Balestri when the three of them finally rotated back up to the top. You just mentioned it. Balestri now just 1.3 back. Kurzbach 5.5 behind Balestri. Leaders getting spread out and grouped up. We get on board here with our top qualifier, Simon Kurzbach in the Mugen Siki. 
working his way through the top side. You don't know if he got back there in traffic a little bit after that first tire change, which we thought was a, a good bit early. And comes to the pits again. We'll see if that strategy pays off here. Simon's dad, the master mechanic, down and away they go. Oh, lap traffic, that was... Uh, How about that? Really Boyke nice job there. Him lots of room. 2015 world champ. You can see the uh, chassis on this one. OS Engines, as we talked about, our TQ here this week. Really put one together. Here's about 196 fuel stop. The last three did a 19 flat fuel stop. Yeah, we saw the 18 threes are the 18 five. So, I mean, honestly, that uh, that fuel stop might have cost him a second. Yeah. I think you need to be in the 19s here in the World Championship Finals to keep your driver in the hunt. Really, 19 flats, uh, you know, high 18s to a 19 flat. Otherwise, you're probably giving something up. And that is, is that Gruber right behind him? Gruber is in the all orange, coming up on the back of Kurzban now. Gruber is maybe going to plus one our top qualifier. How about that, man? Oh, makes the. Is Kurzban, that. Did Kurzban that just happen? Him, yeah. Wow. Kurzban had no choice, had to give it to him. Kurzban's car is not feeling real great right now. He's been in the 14, so maybe they're going to need tires again. They came in early, got two tires only. Maybe that wasn't the move. Gruber at the front here, looking strong. He got four tires early on. Car goes up, fuel goes in, and away they go. 27 minutes in. He came in about 12 minutes into the race. So a little more time on those tires now than he had initially when they made a tire change. Certainly not going to stop for tires four times, right? I hope not. At this pace, maybe they can afford it. They only give up five seconds or so on a tire change. Oh, big Ooh. save right there out of Gruber. Mat Way out there by the grass. Matsukura getting some fuel. Comes out again on an 18-9. You're right, son. Matsukura made up some ground here. He's been circulating our top group for a while. We stay on board with fourth place. Look at Pelestri showing up in the picture right here, just six tenths back. He is closing the gap quickly here. Pelestri and Gruber are on similar fuel strategies. They've been coming in around the same time. They both did the short stop early on to get the clear track. Seems to be working their advantage now. By my count, Gruber got tires earlier than Pelestri. The left may cycle through. Trying to make the pass right there. That car just behind them is not for position. Gruber with a 13-8. Balestri with a 13-7. The car once again right behind them. Not for position. Balestri a little bit wide right there. Might have got some pickup. Scrub some of that off. And you can see the car a little bit loose there the next couple of turns. Exactly what we were talking about before. Gruber collecting his thoughts. Got a little bit of breathing room now. 13-7 to Balestri's 14 flat last time across. Man, look here. at that thing, a rocket ship down the straightaway. We uh, we talked about this before. They're running about the, the better part of 70 miles an hour down that front straightaway. Lestri closing in once again. See him down in the paint. He's had the raciest line throughout our final so far of any of our leaders. Oh, bit of a bobble there. Ruger. Oh, so close. Almost catching that rut. Dario Spin Hawk, and again, Ooh. another beautiful race line right there. Gruber gives it up, and right into oh. the pits comes Balestri. Balestri, aggressive push there right before the pit stop. Comes in at the 28 oh, point mark. Big moment Ooh. right there. Happened right in front of Balestri. He dodged it somehow. But Gruber should be coming in soon. They're within a lap of each other. Balestri's out lap, an 18-7. Another beautiful stop there, and I think Balestri was probably thinking, let me try to undercut here, and ended up with the pass, but had already committed. Watch the pit exit as Gruber, no, Gruber stayed out. Gruber now well ahead of Balestri, waiting on the pit stop. We're at 29 minutes and 15 seconds into this one as we approach the halfway mark of our 60-minute World Championship final. Top three or four have been duking it out for sure. Four seconds to the rears is Balestri now as we're waiting for Gruber to make that pit stop. Matsukura throwing a 13-9 down back there in third place, followed up by Jesse Davis inside of the top four. Matsukura, uh, he's showing him a lap down to our leaders and uh, seven seconds back. So 
We'll find out what happens there, but those those tire changes are the game changer here here in terms of the middle of the race. Gruber's car's still looking very good. 13 nines pretty consistent these last handful of laps. Car's not wiggling around too much. Looks like he's got control. But Lestri in the two spot though, haunting just did a 13.53. <laughs> His super pole was a 13.51, folks. That is incredibly quick right there. 13.45, by the way, out of Jesse Davis. Oh. Gruber in. Car goes up, fuel goes in. They're doing tires. Gruber getting some fresh meats. Right side's going on. They're going to do left sides as well. Well, watch this out lap. That was clean down and away. So Gruber here at the halfway point getting some fresh tires and a full tank of fuel. I was going to brag on Jesse Davis. I think he had it for a little bit. That 1345. Yes, I said a 45 quickest lap of the weekend. But Dario Balestri throws down a 1344. <laughs> Unbelievable lap time. <laughs> We're halfway through a 60-minute final, <laughs> and these guys are setting new track records. Gruber comes out of the pits with four fresh tires at a 26 flat. Fastest four-tire change I've seen so far. No question. Anything inside of the 26s would have been uh, would have been good for that, but nearly into the 25. So incredible effort right there. Balestri coming on, man. He's uh, He's got to be in the hunt for, for favoritism for a bunch of people around the world to win this thing. He has been blistering fast. Curious to see if Gruber can jump back up in the hunt here. All right, our running order shuffling around a bit. Balestri in the front, Gruber in the two spot, Sahashi into the three spot, Davis running fourth, Griner to the five spot, Kurzbach down to six, Kato up to seventh, Matsukura though back to eighth, unfortunately. Takahata, our reigning champion of the world, all the way down in the ninth spot after some manic mechanical frustrations early on, and Taroni is back on the track and in the tenth spot. I think that was Kurzbach that Balestri just passed there a couple of laps ago. So, unfortunately, our TQ, who set a blazing pace, and these two put on a heck of a show here at the beginning of this race, as you mentioned before, struggling. There's Gruber now right in front of Balestri. 13-5 last time by for Balestri. He comes around to lap second spot. Balestri into the pits. This will uh, square things up here just a little bit for Gruber. A little shove onto the pit lane there, able to blend nicely just in front of Katosan. We'll see if uh, Gruber, how much he, uh, closer he gets there, but looks like, uh, see if we can find out what that pit out lap is for Balestri at 18-4. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty incredible, man. They're not giving these guys an inch. Balestri and his team on point right now. He is plus, oh, about a half a lap probably up on Gruber right now. But we'll see how that pans out because Balestri is going to be due for tires before Gruber is. Gruber got a fresh set right at the halfway mark. Balestri got his, I want to say, about the 20-minute mark, maybe just before. Gruber with a 14-second lap there just to tick off the pace in that last effort. Balestri dead straight on the short shoot. Not getting too much into the paint now. Kind of puts it on cruise control and runs 13 eighths. It's, you know, it's casual. I think Davis about nine seconds back behind Gruber here. Balestri across the line, 13.9. His average right now, just past the halfway mark, mind you, with four tire stops and fuel, a 14.2. That is impressive. To say the least. Absolutely incredible here as we continue on past the halfway point. 26 minutes left inside of this one. The 2023 IFMAR Nitro 8th Scale World Championships. Pilestri coming through the switchback section. Now to our short shoot. It, it climbs up a little hill, and just before you get to that bank corner, it loses just a touch of elevation. Really hard on the car as we jump on board with Gruber, who is currently in that two spot. You see him give or take. Oh, Gruber into the pits now. Just fuel. Down and away. Clean stop there. 13-8 for Balestri. 13-9 for Gruber. Gruber on his outlap. Fresh tank of fuel. Comes down the hill. Through the elbow. Smooth and easy across the double apex. 19-1. It's going to be fun to watch this play out to the very end. Both of them clearly on different plans. With Balestri Gruber, Davis now to the three spot. Sahashi to fourth. 
Greiner on the out lap, a 19-1, just got a fresh tank of gas in the sixth car, running fifth. Jesse Davis, one of the transfers in out of the semi, started off in the fifth position, working his way up into that top three. Now it's fallen down just a little bit. Tadahiko Sahashi starting off in the seventh position, currently being scored inside of the top three. Getting a little bit of traffic here, a little bit of nose and tail stuff action as well. Gruber trying to stay clean ahead of some of that action. Looks like he's chasing around Balestri. Unfortunately, Balestri pit stopped him, and now he is plus one completely. Yeah, he was really close. Oh, somebody off to the side there. Ah, this is a let go. Kato-san being very generous with the track space. Balestri is on 150. Gruber in the two spot on 149. Sahashi's on 148. So our leader just now on 149 for Sahashi. So, yeah, to put it in perspective, uh, Dario Balestri on a 254, one flat with a two to a 253, one flat with a 12 for Tony Gruber. Balestri now getting some fuel. Could be more, could be less. 25-4, Balestri probably getting tires that time by. That would be an overall pace, by the way, those numbers that we refer to, some of the bigger numbers on a 253-lap pace. Of course, stops in the pits will change things up as, once again, we go back to our leader here. That is Dario Balestri. Balestri's pit stop on his outlap was a 25-6, so probably got some tires on that one. So that's going to bring Gruber back onto the same lap as Gruber now both both of them on 153. Lestri still has a pretty sizable lead. You see the orange car in the back of the shot there is Gruber. Bought a straightaway and some change behind our leader. Yeah, showing 1.8 behind. Funny how this strategy works out, right? I mean, we can see as much as six and seven seconds, a gap there, and then all of a sudden right back together again. So that would mean Balestri got tires with about 24 minutes to go. Couple of lappers, by the way, in between them here, and they have been playing very nice, but still play a role. Gruber right up on him. Those three are nose to tail there. Gruber with the position, but he's behind both of them. He's going to have to find his way around. They both moved over in the yep. front straightaway and gave him that spot. Gruber has been closing a tenth a second per lap for the last handful of laps. Balestri back down to a 13.7. Gruber with a quicker 13.7, though, so still making up ground. Jesse Davis on pace with our leaders, but off by one. Him and Sahashi both trying to make up some time. Lustry ripping now with a beautiful whew, section inside of this track, man. Nice and clean. I laugh because Gruber is hungry. 1377 for Balestri. Gruber with a 1356. Here, let me tenths. grab a couple tenths here. See if I can't tighten this up for you. Balestri cracking the whip. 1369 and Gruber's 138 gave it all back. 1.4 the split here. For sure closing this thing up. As we saw before, though, these guys, when they catch them, it's uh, it's one thing to catch them. It's another thing to pass them. Balestri, not afraid. We'll see if Gruber can get something like that done if he gets a chance with that said, Gruber loses a couple now yeah. at 1.6 back. I was going to say, that might have been Gruber's car's happy hour when it was as good as it was going to get, able to turn those hot laps. Gruber in the pits. Gruber went in for fuel, maybe tires. We'll check the lap time on the way out. 20.9 is fuel only. Pick up Jesse Davis. Davis with a great run of the semis and comes in here for his pit stop as well. And a tire change. Fuel and tires. Right Should side. be the last one of this race. Left sides. They went for a 20-minute tire strategy. Yeah, so two tire changes there for Jesse Davis. This is the second one of the two. Should get him to the end. Long run, though, 21 minutes. That will get all the good at him for sure. Davis coming across the line to check that out lap. Going to be a 26-6, so very respectable. Boy, really nice yeah. job there with tires. Balestri and Gruber still at the front. On that pit stop, it's going to move Sahashi up to third. Kurzbach to fourth. Davis down to fifth. Griner in the sixth spot right now. Matsukura up to seventh. Kato in eighth. Takahata in the ninth spot. And Taroni rounding out our running order. Well, once again, Balestri working on a 14-3 average here. Gruber up to second. Are still in second, I should say. Sahashi in third. Kurzbach, our TQ, in the four hole. Jesse Davis fifth after that pit stop. Dominic Greiner back up to six. He's been high and low and back up to six. Nato Matsukura, the six time champ, in the seventh hole. Kato uh, Kukikato out of the tenth spot and eighth. 
our former champ, Shoki Takahata, in ninth, and then Francisco Taroni to round up the field. Coming up to 40 minutes down with just 20 remaining. Oh. Right across the nose. Right along with Jesse Davis. He is in the number five spot right now. See him smooth and easy through the lap traffic. Everybody getting the room they need. I think we're uh, going to try to find Tadahiko Sahashi as uh, we watch Davis now working his way through traffic here as well. And taking a look at Tadahiko now. Seventh on the door means he started seventh on the grid all the way up to third now as we have worked through our world championship final. He's gotten past the halfway mark. He's into the last third of this one, so it's a very good chance here as he comes into the pits. They're going to do tires this time by. They can see they're ready. Fuel goes in. Tires go. Look how fast their hands go. Oh, yeah, a little quick disconnect there. on the outside. There's a little tab on the outside that they push uh, and opens it up so that they can get the tire off. There's a locator pin on the inside that they have to line the wheel up with and then rotate the wheel in to grab that pin and then send them away. So watching what they're doing is uh, is pretty amazing to see how quickly they get it done. 29.8 on the pit stop. Losing a few seconds oh, compared yeah. to some of our front runners, but they are inside of 20 minutes, so those tires should make it to the end for him. No problem. Problem. Last ones, uh, that's what we were kind of expecting. The one that threw us off was Kurzbach, and he's yet to jump back into the fray. A couple of laps down at this point. Two cars in the battle here as it stands right now. Kurzbach was, I think, down to seventh at one stage, back up to third now. I believe he's probably going to do for tires shortly here. Yeah, I saw him uh, down there in six, so, yep, that sounds about right. Might have lost another <laughs> spot in the process. Jesse Davis up in the fourth right now behind Kurzbach. Palestri just did a 1757. So let's throw one of those out there. Late in the, <laughs> the race. 42 minute minutes mark. left. Yeah. <laughs> Tony there. Gruber still there in second place. Davis, Keeping it alive. Davis crapping, cracking the whip there. 13-6. We ride along with the seven car of Sahashi. Gruber 10 seconds back, so keep in mind we're talking about lap times here at 13 and a half. So the better part of a full lap for Gruber. Hashi's car looking very good on the fresh rubber. Smooth, no miscues, accelerates in a straight line. Simon Kurzbach now, although uh, a good bit back there by a lap, has worked his way back up into the top three. Lestri did a 1364 last time by. He's not giving up on these hot laps. And Gruber not. Gruber with a 14 flat. Definitely losing some more time to him. Lestri will be running up on him here uh, in just a little bit at the rate things are going. And uh, a potential put the entire field a lap down. So with about 17 left to go, Balestri just came out of the pits with a 19 flat out lap. Kurzbach in for fuel. No tires. Like he rotated out right behind. Is that Jesse Davis? So Davis will pick up another spot right here. Should change the next time they come across the stripe. Balestri on the back of Kurzbach. Jesse Davis into the top three. Balestri working around Kurzbach here one more time. The level of respect out of the drivers is pretty cool. These two guys were really battling tooth and nail at the beginning, and now Kurzbach respectfully moves out of the way, knowing the leader's coming through. Kurzbach uh, has, that's not Sahashi in the back. That's Griner with him in the pink, so not for position. Yeah, Griner with a busy day there in the semis. Made it pay. They uh, did an engine change in less than 10 minutes. They had 10 minutes to do it, but they did it in less than 10 minutes. Went out there for a, a little warm-up, and everything seemed to be okay, and then ended up inside of the top three to make the transfer into the Is A-game. That maybe looked like maybe Jesse Davis off track there. I'll tell you here in a second. He had just done a 13-6, and it was him. Erzbach now up a spot as Davis went off just after the 180. I didn't see what happened. I just saw his car upside down being turn marshaled. Who's on a lot of ground, of course. He'll fall down towards the bottom of the pack here. Currently down to fifth after he's in third. Ah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one for sure. I think that was not a pit lap at a 20.9. So it could have been a pit lap. That's pretty close. But 
We were now seven seconds back, 7.7, I believe it was, to Balestri. 15 minutes left to go. Balestri, I believe, coming out on a pit lap, but don't quote me. No, he just came out. I saw the red light come on for a second. This first block out here, lapping uh, back up into the top three. He's a lap down. Actually, might be two down. Balestri did another 15 8, two of them in a row, uh, 13 5 rather, two 13 5s in a row for Balestri. Not taking his foot off of the neck, is he? Jesse Davis now completing lap number 189. We are scheduled to go 250 plus laps in this one. We were talking about that earlier, how many laps we were going to guess they were going to do in the final. I was up closer to 300, but turns out. Or I was lower than 200, but these guys are doing qualifying Yeah, I pace. thought we did the math on it and came up with about 240, somewhere yeah. in that range. They're clearly going to blow right past that. On pace for 254 is our leader, Balestri, 253 for Gruber, and then 251 for the rest of the gang. Gruber doing a pit stop, so we'll see what his outlap is. He should be due across in just a few. There it is. Here comes Jesse Davis. Is that Davis there into the pits? Gruber did a 26-6 on a pit stop. 14 minutes left to go. I'm going to guess that's four tires. So fresh tires, if that is the case, with 14 minutes to go. We'll see if he is able to make something up here on Balestri. Balestri probably in the pits getting some fuel right now. Yeah, 18-5 pit lap there for Balestri. All day long. Just continues to get it done. They've had the fastest pit stops repeatedly. He keeps doing 13-5s, and no one else is doing them right now. Quickest lap of the race as well. That 13-44, blistering 13-44. He's one full lap up on Gruber at this moment. Plus a little Winding things down here, 13 minutes to go inside of this one. A lot of racing yet to go. A lot of things can really go wrong. I will tell you, I think for most of the lower mains, a uh, bulk of the action happens in the last couple of minutes, if you will, as the pressure really starts to mount. As Jesse Davis with Matsukura here. Yeah, Jesse right there in the middle of that group. And not Kersball with him. I think that is lap traffic on both sides. Coming to the closing stages here, a handful of pit stops remaining as we get down to about 12 minutes to go. Yeah, we thought about a total of 15 pit stops for fuel. Out of the way right there, another respectful move. That'll open up some track here for, for Jesse Davis. See if we can close the gap a little bit on Sahashi. Right along here with Dominic Greiner from Germany. Comes up and around that 180. Yeah, and again, talking about uh, that effort there in the semis. Great job out of that team. Hart looks very smooth right now. Griner with a 14 flat last time by. 1365 here for Blestry. Continues to lay down consistently the quickest laps of the group. Griner looks to have this car well in control. Not trying to push it onto the paint right now. Maybe just trying to salvage his world championship final. As we get down to the, the stage of the race where some of those mechanicals might start kicking in. 50 minutes nearly completed. Reiner three and a half seconds behind Kurzbach. That's the next player in front of him. Davis in front of Kurzbach in the four hole. Sahashi in the third spot. Gruber and then Balestri, our leader. And here comes Dominic Reiner in for a fuel stop. Down. And away, nice and clean. He's just in front of our race leader, Balestri. About the seven mark, and then one more fuel stop after that should get him home. Balestri, yeah, right behind him, our leader right behind him. On the outlap there for Griner, a 19.6, well done. A couple more fuel stops there for Dominic Griner. Looks like Balestri did a 14-2. I hope he's okay. He came out there behind uh, behind Griner. Ah, the 14-2 was his pit in lap being safe. Oh, 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 that's why. 13-7 for Gruber in the two spot. Davis now up to third. We stay on board with our sixth place runner, 
Dominic Greiner. I think I can safely say 75% of the field can barely put a 14-2 on yeah. the board. Balestri came out with a 26-2. That's four fresh tires with 10 minutes remaining in this one. So Balestri should be all finished up here with tires. That'll bring him home. 14-14. A lap right there. And a 13.77 for Gruber. Balestri's fresh tire is not doing him any favors. He hasn't gotten down into the 13 yet. Yeah, and I wonder if they weren't scuffs. I wonder if they're knocking the new off of them here for just a moment. 13.78, Gruber getting after it now. Might be his opportunity to close this gap. Gruber's got a long way to go. They're just Ten now on the same left. lap. Balestri is coming across the line right now, so about a half a track. Yeah, 10 seconds according to the split time out of a, call it a 14 second lap. So yeah, three quarters of a track there, a lot of room to make up. Three tenths go to Gruber on two, lap number 213. Balestri now down in the 13s at a 13.9 that last lap. Gruber does a 13.8, so a tenth goes to Gruber. He needs seconds, not tenths, but tenths make seconds. Still a lot of racing yet to go. I mean, we've raced so long, we think we're right here at the very end, but we're not at near nine minutes left, so a lot can happen here. Taking a look at Gruber here, and Gruber once again just on point. Car looks amazing, as does the driver. Focus is very, just incredible. Very aggressive line through the sweeper there. I thought it was going to make it wrong. Gruber 13.7, Balestri 13.7, but Gruber's was a bit quicker. 9.6 back. A lot of work to do here for Gruber. Eight minutes still to go. We might see some pit stop windows coming up here. Gruber working his way into we, our short shoot section. That's an uphill with a little bit of a dip, and you got to work your way through that bank corner. Will slide there as he comes around the elbow corner. Gruber with a 13.7, still making up a tenth per lap on Balestri, give or take. Davis yep. running in that third spot, 13.9. Not a threat to reel these guys in. Kind of got it on cruise control. Yeah, a couple of laps back there is Davis. So, yeah, not a threat for our leaders as it stands right now, but fighting for oh, that no. third and final spot on the podium, still very important. Gruber making up nearly four-tenths that time by. Wow, that is a big moment. Balestri, I wonder if Balestri's in some traffic. Maybe Balestri just kind of taking it easy. They've probably done some math and science, and they figure we to don't back have to off go a much little faster bit. than this. You don't have to keep ripping off the 13-5s? Balestri's in the pits. No, a 20-second outlap oh, right there. He isn't. That was his outlap. So even with the pit stop that Gruber didn't do, did not make up enough time to catch him. And Gruber now into the pits. At seven minutes still to go here in our World Championship final. So they'll have one more stop for fuel, and that should get them home. That should put the gap right back out, uh, pretty much out back where it was as well. We see the outlap for Gruber and find out where he's at, see if he put together a nice one, picked up a half second there. Back on board with race leader Balestri. Suddenly he's back down into the sub 14 second laps. No problem. 13 6 backs it up with a 13 7. You I think he just gets in the groove, man. Nearly matching his Super Pole lap time at 13 44 8. His, his Super Pole was a 13 41 with a 6 on the end, I think. Split about 8 seconds between first and second. So it actually grew just a little bit despite Gruber having a half second better pit stop. Lestri last time 13.6, this time 13.8. Gruber only able to muster a 14.0. Davis in and out of the pits. He had a 20.5. Six minutes left to go. That's an opportune time. He may be going to need another one. Lestri with nobody in front of him, nobody behind him, no pressure whatsoever. Sit in, get in the rhythm, and just keeps ripping those laps out. A 13.83 again. Average still 14.3. A rare miscue there as it looked like Balestri got into the dirt for just a moment. A 14 flat, so maybe. Got don't want to lose, uh, don't want to lose it now. So second place, Gruber down there in the bottom right hand side of your screen, your leader in the top left hand portion of the screen. 
That is Dario Balestri. Balestri's car still looking very smooth. 13-7 last time by. No complaints there. 13-7 that time by. Gruber did a 13-8. We approach the final five minutes of our World Championship final. Capricorn driver there for Gruber, as you can see up behind him. Uh, factory Capricorn driver and Infinity. Yes, this same Infinity here as this racetrack is Dario Balestri. Could you be very happy here if he could bring this one home? Balestri's car looks very good. He's driving it correctly, staying in the paint, little to no mistakes. Gruber actually doing the same. Both of their cars look very racy, but the pitch strategies may be playing a difference here. Gruber still on the lead lap, but just barely. It just seems like Balestri has had pace on the entire field here, the entire length of this race. Once in a while, backs off a little bit. I think when he put on that set of tires, they must have been brand new tires. I wonder if they didn't have a set of scuffs. I think it took him two, three, four laps for those things to come in, and then boom, right back down on the 13s. And he was fine. He They're, was all good with it. Look at identical lap times for our leaders, but on opposite laps, 13. 749 to a 13749, but then it's a 13749. And into the pits. Final pit stop here for Balestri with four minutes left to go. Right at the four minute mark, too. Maybe 10, maybe five seconds under, and a little bit of action right there with lap traffic. It looks like the lap traffic gave way. No contact. Balestri will take the spot and run away. But five seconds to the good here. I mean, it's not out of the question to see a flame out here right at the right. very end, running it that close. I'm surprised they didn't give themselves like a 10-second window. But maybe he can back off a little bit. He has a little bit of a lot of room, really, to work with back to Gruber. We're on board here with the five car. Jesse Davis, Gruber, Gruber in. into the pits. Gruber in on a 13.88 in lap. Balestri still out front. So Gruber coming out of the pits at about 3.10 left to go. You see him just at the front of our screen there. Balestri. Gruber's end lap at a 1388? Yeah. 19.5 <laughs> with a full tank of gas for Gruber. A pair of 19.5s in the last two pit stops. I mean, on point. Two minutes and 50 seconds on our master clock. Balestri has control of this world championship final. Sizable lead and the fastest race car on the track. Yeah, I mean, this is it. All the pits have cycled out. They are where they are here to make it to the end as we take a look at Davis one more time. Davis and Kurzbach, by the way, and that is a battle for the podium position. Two tenths separate. Kurzbach trying to salvage a podium spot here after being our TQ right there on Davis. Great battle here for third. Top qualifier, top seed. Kurzbach trying to salvage a podium here in his world championship final. Got the TQ jinx, a little bit of bad luck for him. Has him here fighting for third. Davis kind of parked it there in that left-hander. Picks up the throttle, drives away. Two minutes left to go. Two minutes yet to go, and these two guys are duking it out. Whoa. Oh, right there. Kurzbach trying to take a look. Oh, and a bit of a mistake by Kurzbach, and that'll create some breathing room. Let's see if he can close it back up here. Great battle for the final podium position. Sahashi now getting into the mix. Yeah, I was just saying Third too. car in line wants a piece of this podium as well. We Tyler, know it's not a race for the lead, but it's a heck of a race. Podium, you'll get in the pictures if you get on the podium. Kurzbach did it right there underneath him. It was outside in. That'll teach you. <laughs> it <laughs> it looked up for just a second, man, and it all went down. Jesse Davis able to hang on. Kurzbach right back there on the gurney. Good stuff right now. The leader just pitted. Balestri with the last uh, end of the run pit stop to ensure that they can hold on to it. Wow. So had plenty of time, I guess. I mean, let's see what his, what his pit 19. out is. A 19-flat, so they picked up the pace there. Battle here raging on between David, Davis and Kurzbach. Gruber, who was eight plus back, now six back, so looks like Balestri still safe here as we watch this battle for the final podium position still on. Griner giving him tons of room, 45 seconds. Oh! Kurzbach takes a look, makes the contact. Here comes Tadahashi. Tadahashi is going to pick up the spot. Davis, Davis cuts right across the grass and keeps going. Ah, that's not going to fly. Davis, I guarantee you, hot. I'm curious to see if they hand out a stop and go to Kurzbach. This could be all. Sahashi. Sahashi may be going to get a gift from the RC gods as Kurzbach 
and Davis made contact. Davis got shoved across the lane, so he's going to roll over probably. And there he is right back in front of him. That is Davis right there in front of those two. Five seconds. Here comes Kurzbach now fighting a lot of contact oh. with Sadahashi. And Kurzbach again. Looks like he's going to survive that battle. Now he's rolling right back up behind Jesse Davis. Don't know if that's been a problem or not. And is that our leader? He's done. Side by side. Is that Balestri? Kurzbach and Davis. Kurzbach gets him at the line. Balestri was already done. Already We're going to hold on to the two spot. It's going to be getting heated up here. Crazy at the very end. We got so involved in that battle. Dario Balestri rolled across the stripe and won it. Tony Gruber in second. And the timing and scoring showing Kurzbach in third. No shortage of wicked contact between him, Jesse Davis, and Tadahiko Sahashi. Celebration all around for Balestri. Great, great battle there at the end for the final podium position. And look at this World Championship trophy. Hugs Super all cool. around. Condolences as well. <laughs> That's the Infinity team, super stoked on their world championship. There's Kato, or, uh, Koki San. Yeah, I was gonna say Kenji San as well. Uh, gotta be super happy, of course, the owner of this track, this company, and uh, that driver. So beautiful, beautiful stuff. And Jesse Davis coming down there, he's getting a hug, the, uh, the tall dude with the man bun. And it looks like Scotty has caught up with our race winner, the first person to win this thing more than once, other than Limberto. Scotty? All right, we're here up here in the driver's time with Dario Balestri. Dario, an hour long final. What an amazing drive. Take us through what happened. Yeah, it uh, was very tight. They started with Simon, then with uh, Tony. But uh, we all race in, in, in the best fair way. Yeah, the point today was uh, to keep the tires alive. We start uh, with uh, one strategy, then we change during the race because uh, we were not able to, to make what we planned. But yeah, the new, the new Infinity is something unbelievable. And with the Max, mamma mia. <laughs> The guys down in the pits, they worked very, very hard with great pit stops. That's, uh, that's a big key of the championship, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pit stop was a big, uh, really, really big, uh, big key. We tested many times yesterday. They make a great job. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kenji. Thank you, Massimo. Thank you, Massimo. Thank you, Nikaido. Thank you, everybody. All right. A big round of applause here as Saunders is going to present this amazing trophy, something you will never forget. A big round of applause, your 2023 IFMAR 1-8 World Champion, Dario Balestri. Super cool trophy there for Dario Balestri. Won in 2017, won in 2023, the first person other than Lambertos Glory to win this thing more than once. Well earned today. He was the class of the field all day long. A couple of dog fights in there along the way with our TQ, Simon Kurzbach, and then also with Tony Gruber. They put on a heck of a battle, but he had a wicked fast car today. He applied copious amounts of pressure through the whole first segment of this race, gave Kurzbach not an inch at all, ended up gapping the field. Hats off to Gruber, though. Made a comeback finished on the lead lap. We thought Balestri had these guys covered. He 